11 year old Gabriel likes to show off his football skills. He can't live without his PlayStation. He's a gizmo freak. Music keeps him going and his constant companion is his cell phone. Gabriel got his first cell phone just a few months ago and he loves to show it off. I only have a cell phone because firstly I saw my friends having them and I got jealous. And uh, anyway, I hardly even use it unless I go to my friend's house or I ask my mother when I have to come home. So basically, I, I only use it on you know, needs. He did ask for it and uh, at the beginning we were not uh, for it, truthfully. But it just happens that in today's life, in the kind of places we live, uh, it's become uh, quite a necessity. While Natalie didn't really believe that the cell phone posed any real risk for Gabriel, my interaction with ENT specialist Dr. Ajay Swaroop made me think otherwise. This is the skull bone and this is the area which is in contact with the cell phone directly. Now depending on the thickness of the skull bone, the number of radiations or the energy of the radiation will pass into the brain. So in younger people, it has been seen that the thickness of the skull bone is much thinner as compared to grown-up people. So the bad effects of these rays will be much more in younger people. I also came across a study in Sweden that says that children using cell phones before 20 are more likely to develop brain cancer and tumour of the auditory nerve. When I shared this with Natalie, she immediately took action. Gabriel uses his phone only when it's absolutely necessary and his monthly phone bill has been restricted to just 200 rupees. Not to use it too much, keep it for only emergency. Okay. Meanwhile, I decided to find out if the phone companies were taking some precautions at their end as well. So the next time you want to buy a mobile phone, I suggest you carefully go through the user manual, especially the chapters on safety. The brochures clearly say to keep the phones away from the breast pocket if a person is implanted with a pacemaker. The iPhone warns its users against seizures, blackouts and eye strain. In fact, in the US, every phone is tested by the Federal Communications Commission for its specific absorption rate or SAR before it's available for sale to the public. The SAR represents the rate at which radiations are absorbed by the human body. According to the Time magazine, the biggest culprit in terms of radiation is the Blackberry, the must-have accessory for any successful person. The cell phone emits electromagnetic radiation which is transferred to the cell phone towers. So they must pose a bigger risk than the mobile phone itself. Urmi has been able to get some answers from Professor Girish. Now, as I move away here, you can see that Professor Girish Kumar's meter clearly indicates that as we get closer to the cell phone towers, the radiation levels increase exponentially. Minus he tells me that radiation exposure up to minus 30 dB a day is the safety limit for us. But the meter reads minus 12 or minus 10, even as I stand almost 50 meters away from the towers. Specifically for people who are living close to the cell tower, it's the whole body which is absorbing microwave radiation. Unlike a cell phone where only the brain is getting affected or the upper body. Professor Girish Kumar's findings have left me shaken. But I need to see the consequences of this claim. I'm here to meet Mrs. Vijaya Bhatt, who's suffering from brain aneurysm, and she claims that the cell phone tower above her house is the culprit. These drawn curtains and dusty windows narrate Vijaya's story. She was forced to move out of her dream home almost two years ago. Reason? The cell phone tower is right above the rooftop of her building. I was away because I cannot stay over here due to this illness of mine. The day I come here, I get uh, ill and I cannot stand and do my household works. That was the reason I have to leave from here. I become weak, I, become, I cannot stand, I cannot, means I get shivering my hands. See, now also you can see, this was not there at my place. Now it has started trembling. So you say that it's a very, very harmful thing. Very, very harmful thing. Uh, I just pray to God nobody should go through this. Vijaya's story is disturbing. As of now, nobody can say for sure what these towers that are all over our houses, workplace and our lives really are doing to us.